So this is the public entrance to uh, Brioni Cemetery. Uh, locals say Brioni, but uh, Elio, who just showed us through, called it Brion. Giuseppe Brion is uh, buried here. The two rings you see straight ahead are uh, an emblem of the Brion's love for each other. Up in this main entrance area, we're standing on a pool of water underneath us. You can see the water through the slits, and some of these panels actually are loose. If you go this way, you have the water gate, which you dip down into the water. It's locked now again. But to give you some uh, an indication of some of the detail here, if you look up into the ceiling here, you can see the scupper that lets the water drain straight down into the floor here and back down into the moat. We've got two of those conditions happening there. And then as we walk out this way, we go into the main grassway. There's Janine and Bella. And I'll show you some of the surrounding that we sit in. As you, if you walk out that glass gateway, um, it brings you to uh, that viewing platform with a canopy over it. And it's got a little oculus that you look out to the uh, actual propylae over here where the briones are laid to rest. Um, the whole facility has uh, around the chapel and then back over here this water pump moat and it has recirculating water coming from back pump back to this place right here and you can see that this actually gets really deep it's about even this slit is about three feet deep you can see my reflection down in there uh, and then it gets a little bit larger and continues to drain up into the larger pool over there there's Bella, there's the Briones. Giuseppe died in 78 and uh, he was not put to rest in here till 72. His wife uh, did not die until 2001 or 2002. Just to show, there's Janine, to show you just a little uh, of the surroundings here, kind of set the place. Um, I'll show you uh, the entrance to the chapels right there. Uh, this is the canopy where all the relatives are buried. You see the moat around the chapel. Uh, that's the little town of San Vito. And this wall, of course, uh, surrounds the entire area and it's canted in, Elio told us, because it keeps the voice inside. And here you get a sense of the surrounding area. We're sitting basically just in a field in this little tiny burg. And I don't know if you can see, but off to the uh, northwest is the Alps. And between us and the snow-capped mountain there is Pisano, where we're staying. There's Robin. Uh, Robin, you want to go up the steps and try to pound so we can hear the noise? Thank you. There's another step over there, which I don't know if I'll have enough time to grab with this video, but I'm gonna walk you into the actual chapel now. I know I put this video on its side, but I really wanna capture everything. This would be the more private entrance. All the pumping gear is down underneath here. This private entrance was open today, but you have to um, get local contacts to let you into the actual chapel and Ilio left the chapel open for us. This large gate here actually opens up and it dramatically changes the entrance to be just an overlapping space, an extension of that portico. Janine, would you stand in front of that altar to give a sense of scale? So the overall space is pretty intimate, even though it's a more formal chapel. Uh, the alabaster doors behind open up and so does the gate that corner gate opens up as well it's locked now again but Bella you want to open one of those alabaster doors yeah so they let in the light and then they also open up manually there's a ziggurat and the ceiling ziggurat everywhere and finally you can go up this little private entrance to the chapel across walk across the waterway and you can see the overall chapel here. 
really a very intimate scaled chapel. Bella just hiding behind there. And uh, there you pretty much have all of Brion. <laughs>